Hi, this is Randy, K7AGE, standing on the corner of our camp area. There's my uh, trailer and truck. So if you're looking for where I'm camped, if you go here to 34th and Limburg, and if you look away from the sign, you'll see my, my truck and my trailer across the road. Yeah, another view of the trailer and truck. This is the view from the other side. See my pop out out and my solar panel. So what happens here, you, we buy our camp ticket, it's good for 30 days, so a couple weeks ago, uh, Chris, one of the people we camp with, lives about an hour and a half away, gets all of our camping passes and comes out and stakes out. That's what these stakes and the lines are, those are the um, places that we camp in that we've uh, either paid for or got complimentary camping passes um, for doing volunteer work. I just brought one portable solar panel, nothing fancy. It's maybe 100 watts. Right now the battery's fully charged so it doesn't show any current. I've seen about three and a half amps coming out of there so it's not really a 100 watt panel but it keeps things topped up. But we have a, a camp power station. So here are my antennas. I have the uh, DX Engineering fiberglass mask, the tall one on the left, that holds a 23 foot wire I use for HF. To the right of that, up here, I just installed my ADSB antenna for aircraft tracking. Then I have a um, dual band for uh, 2 meters and 70 centimeters. So what makes this 23 foot wire work is the ICOM automatic antenna tuner. And I believe this is an AH4, which I did buy from DX Engineering. And I have it bonded this one inch wide copper strap to the trailer frame. The coax is sneaking through the, you see that red drain tube, those are the low point drains for the trailer. So I was able to sneak the cables, two coaxes and the control cable up through there. So here's inside the hatch and over here is the, the wrap of all the two coaxes and the control cable. And it's a good place to store the generator. There's my power outlets right here. So these are all the uh, rigs in our camp group. We have a kind of a kitchen set up and a great big um, cover area to hang out in. We have some people here with some pretty nice tent setups. And utility trailer that brings all these all the stuff. There's another trailer of our group. And we have a couple more down here at the end. So we still have some open area. I think there's some people who are still on their way here. We'll get a few more here during the week. Here's the back side of a lot, a lot of the rigs. So here's the camp power station, the Yamaha generator, and big gas can here to fill it. Another shot of it, you see my yellow extension cord that goes off to my trailer. So here's our camp kitchen. We'll start doing camp group meals on, on Monday. We have a sink and a hot water heater, lots of storage in there. Lots of ice chests. We've got this kind of griddle here, poppy pot, and a barbecue. And we have our gnomes. So this group started, uh, we think, about 40 years ago. In fact, I was uh, with about five or six guys on the first camping Dodge Gosh. We actually flew into Chicago and rented a motorhome and uh, stayed about a mile away from here, way out by the road. But uh, the gang has learned a lot in the years and they've got a pretty good routine to get established in here. So this is the uh, view inside the trailer. Um, you see I have my laptop, I have a second monitor, which will become handy when I start doing a lot of FT8 for the W9W Warbirds. I'll do that out of here while they do voice and CW over at uh, Ray Novak's motorhome. And uh, so the two screens allows me to have my logging program up and also grid tracker so I can see what's going on. And then just at the end here is the bed. And over to the right is the little kitchen area. It's a little kitchen, nothing fancy, some storage, uh, a radio system. I have the audio from the TV going in there so I can <laughs> I can hear it when the air conditioner is going because it's it's pretty noisy. And microwave, oven and stove. Uh, down at the bottom is the uh, furnace 
in the power center for the trailer, the fusing, the battery charger, and the refrigerator. Through the door is the uh, bathroom with a shower that I actually fit in. Then there's two bunk beds here, and when I'm traveling, it's just full of all my stuff. So here are my uh, radio stuff. I have a, a Bearcat scanner. I'm listening to the air traffic. It's just constant chatter. I have a Yesu dual bander, and uh, I need to change that to 146.55. That's kind of the frequency from the campground here, me over to Ray and stuff. And then I have the ICOM 7100 and a USB cable to the computer. I'm up and running. And this is my laptop. This is a Asus uh, portable. It's got an OLED screen, so it's, it's really nice. And I have my ADSB running at the moment. And these are a few of the airplanes that I'm tracking. And here's the ADSB SDR receiver stick. I have a USB extension cable on it. And it currently shows I'm tracking 126 aircraft. So powering all this gets to be a little bit of a rat's nest. So kind of the core <laughs> is my 30 amp BioNO battery. And uh, a lot of stuff plugged into it. So I got the um, battery charger plugged in. I've got the ICOM 7100. I got the Yesu dual bander. I have this device that I got from PowerWorks. So it's 12 volt in and USB-C out. And my idea was to use that to charge the laptop. Although the laptop complains about it being a, a a, you know lower current charger wants me to <clears throat> plug in the the real one but it seems to charge I have a tester I haven't gotten around to see how much currents going through so then I have uh, USB things plugged in to charge my phone and my watch and I don't know cables going everywhere so that's the power the radio the 7100 is mounted underneath the table there's a uh, board that goes between the benches, so I have a uh, power supply. It's an Alenco, and when I'm running off AC, and the radio is over there on the left, and I have the radio kind of mounted so I can get to the connectors, because when I uh, travel, I unplug the coaxes and um, the tuner control cable, that gray one to the white connector. And it's got a USB line and another line to go up to the control head, and of course power. So it's down there and out of the way. Only the control head is up here on the table. Doesn't take a lot of table space. That's all for now. This is uh, from the K7AGE Mobile Ham Shack and Command Center, SAN 73. Hope to see you on the air working the W9W Warbird Special Event Station. Uh, just talked to Ray this morning. He's basically doing the big setup tomorrow which is Sunday and the uh, special event station runs from Monday through Friday and um, I'll probably be doing a lot of FT8 out of here the goal is 1500 contacts so be looking for us over at Ray station it'll be voice and CW and uh, one of the guys is bringing a, a station he'll be working CW at night and I hope to be on in the evenings along with everything else that goes on around here and um, hope to have a lot of fun so again this is K7AGE from the Mobile Hamshack Command Center saying 73